November was a bit of a crazy month for us. So when all of the hard work was done, Ben planned a trip for us to go to Nashville and to just get to decompress a little bit because if we stayed at home, we would stare at a dirty house and all the chores that needed to be done. So getting away was necessary. We didn't intend for it to be, but it kind of turned into a little coffee trip. So to intro it, we're going to have Dave explain a little bit about some different coffees. So. All right, so the first drink we're going to start out with this morning is Ben's favorite, the Cortado. Ben comes in uh, regularly, and the first thing he starts off with is a Cortado. Uh, Cortado is an interesting coffee drink. It is equal parts espresso and equal parts milk. So it's going to um, give you a very rich, creamy espresso drink, a little bit stronger, I would say, than a cappuccino. Uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, freshly grind the espresso. We already got it locked in the machine here. So I'm gonna get a, get a shot started, get the pull going. And I'm gonna go ahead and measure out just a little bit more, right at the two ounce, maybe a little bit more, just in case I lose a little bit during the steaming process. And it doesn't take very long at all to, to heat this milk. So get the milk ready. I'm gonna go ahead and pound down some of the, some of the bubbles on there. This is why I like to serve our cortado, just kind of a little bit. Pour here. You'll see a little bit of that cream, the crema on the top. So it's going to give you a nice, rich, four ounce drink. What I would like to not see would be uh, too much foam. It's hard when you're doing the actual four ounces. Um, I don't like to waste too much milk, so I want to get the four ounce, get the two ounces in there. Just get it nice and hot. Try not to aerate it too much, then kind of pound it down. So that way, it's not too much foam. You see, there's a little bit. Uh, on the top, but you don't want, you know, this much foam coming up in here. If you really want foam, you really want to do uh, a cappuccino, which is what we'll make next. Uh, what we do here is uh, what is called a traditional cappuccino. Uh, a lot of folks as are getting into coffee. When they think of cappuccino, they think of the local gas station. I'll go into one of these express machines and hit cappuccino, and that's okay. Um, but it's not really a real cappuccino. So um, now uh, for us, a traditional cappuccino is a six ounce drink and it's called a drink of thirds. So you're gonna have one third espresso, one third milk and a third of milk foam. So we get a nice uh, six ounce drink. And so um, a lot of folks, when they'll come, they'll, they really want a latte and they're thinking cappuccino. Uh, so it gives us a chance to kind of talk to our customers about really what a cappuccino is, what sets it apart. And really what sets a cappuccino apart is the foam that sits on the top. So we'll make one of those now. Now, as I said, the foam is what kind of sets it apart. So, start the aeration. And I'll aerate a little bit more to get that foam going. It's going to be nice and foamy. Now, as it sits, the foam is going to harden. Kind of, kind of set. Like I said, I like to do mine just a little bit different than some folks. So, I like to just get the milk in first. And I like to lay the foam. Now you have a cappuccino. All right, so now we are gonna make our most popular drink. We're gonna make a latte. Uh, it is espresso, uh, and if you want a flavor, we put in the flavor. In this case, we are gonna go with a mocha. Uh, so we'll just add the sauce, we'll put in the espresso, mix it together, and let it melt the chocolate. And then we'll add the steamed milk and just create a little bit of foam on the top. Bubbles are down in that. Get a good stir. We got to Nashville late on Monday night and we stayed in a nice little Airbnb in the Five Points area to be our home base. It was a cute basement of this house right here that had a bedroom, a bathroom, and a living room, all we needed. So our first trip wasn't till the next morning when we woke up and we went to a place called Marche, which is a little artisan cafe.
So we decided to have some coffee. Uh, my cortado that I ordered was a little more cappuccino-ish. And I had a latte, which was also very cappuccino-ish. So it was good, it was fun. We had some brunchy food. It was a great brunch place. Mm -hmm. But when your latte comes in a bowl, it's a little different. <laughs> uh, it was a lot, it was a great way to wake up, but mm -hmm. I did kind of feel like Mike Myers, you know, hello, I ordered the large cappuccino, not... <laughs> <laughs> We explored Nashville so it wasn't until the next day that we hit up our next coffee shop and that was close in the area and this one was barista parlor this place seemed to get the most play on Yelp and it seemed pretty popular from a social media perspective now this place is very <laughs> hipsterish very. Um, there are um, some Twitter accounts that kind of poke fun at it a little bit because of its hipsterness uh, and you can see it fits the mold pretty good. You've got Hannah here who's pulling a shot for us. Now, I had fun with Hannah because note, she has blue hair and she's working at a coffee shop. I also have blue hair and work at a coffee shop. And she's even got her F holes on her arm right there for her tattoo. She plays the cello as well. So we both play cello. So we had a little bit in common there to get to talk about, which was fun. The coffee here was excellent. Fantastic. Uh, we had several different things. I had an Ethiopian blend, um, just a drip, and what did you have there? I stepped off from my normal. I usually, again, the Cortado is kind of my standard, and I went for this whiskey caramel latte, which is totally a dessert coffee. Here it is, and I, it's never something I would normally pick out, but it was good. And we also got to eat here, so we had a nice filling brunchy breakfast, but the atmosphere here was really, really fun. It and was cool. Um, you know, so you had things to look at. You you weren't just sitting around staring at your phone, even though we probably did that a little more than we should have <laughs> while we were here. But everybody working there was really nice. Super nice. Uh, was willing to talk to us and just answer questions because I had never seen one of those before. Yeah, the siphon machines. Those I've been looking at those online. They're really cool and they're crazy expensive, but they're a really neat piece of machinery for now, coffee. Note, the guy at Barista Parlor said they had not used theirs in four months. No. So, very specialized piece of yeah. equipment there. Yep. After getting highly caffeinated, we ended <laughs> up heading downtown so that we could go check out some art galleries, as well as going to Frothy Monkey, which was a coffee shop down there that has a couple of locations. So, wanted to check them out as well. There's some neat uh, murals on the building so that we... This was right at our parking lot. So right we didn't, right we, where we parked. Didn't have to even move. <laughs> It was there just waiting for us to get to look at, which we find very different pieces right there. All yeah, the side by side. I liked them side by side. There again, like you said, very, very, very different. And good forced perspective there. Mm-hmm. Good to see it. And this is Frothy Monkey, another hipstery place. <laughs> I don't yeah, think it's cool. <laughs> I don't think you can ex uh, escape that in coffee shops no, a whole lot. No. Um, Ben ordered his normal here. I got a Cortado, but here, this this is the first time it's plated and it's got that glass of seltzer there to cleanse the palate when you're done drinking. Which is fun. And I had a red eye or black eye, depending on where you're going, which is a drip coffee with a shot of espresso added to it. So I thought the campfire type mug was a fun way to serve that, given its name. Yeah, but again, coffee was very good. They knew exactly what they're doing and the baristas were very very friendly and very busy we sat right by the barista and i don't think she had a moment to stop the entire time we were there no she didn't across the street from frothy monkey was this little interesting alley indoor alley i guess yeah. um, called the arcade it had some individual artists that were upstairs sadly none of them were open so we missed it but there was also a wedding chapel so if you were in the mood you could have elvis marry you at the rhinestone wedding chapel uh -huh. <laughs> so we wandered around in there for a few minutes and then looked at the clock and sadly it was time to start making our way back home but before we got all the way out of town there was one more coffee shop we wanted to head to named crema <laughs> We actually saw their vehicle. Sadly, they weren't in it. No. But. <laughs> <laughs> and we hit one more coffee shop on the way out of town for some caffeine in the car. And this is Crema. And I had a simple iced coffee from here. And I had my Cortado because that's what I was trying to work through with all the different coffee shops. 
So they were good. Mm -hmm. uh, good iced coffee, that's one of the things they were known for. So enjoyed that. And it did last me most of the way home. We had fun with our little impromptu coffee tour of Nashville. If you've ever done anything like that before, make sure and let us know in the comments down below. Also, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. We'd love to have you join our little vlog family community here. You can follow Beth on Instagram and Twitter with Grace and Lotties as the handle, and you can find me on Instagram at Ben Hedgepath. Remember, coffee should happen in everyday life. Make sure you're drinking it. Bye.